Welcome, welcome everybody. Um, we're going to just be having a little bit of an introduction. There are a couple of Zoom polls in and amongst our conversation. Um, and then we'll uh, uh, take you through what's coming up in our next strategy cafe. So I think we can kick off um, with really introducing our guest for this morning. Um, if you can just move to the next slide, Matt, that'll be great. We're super lucky this morning um, to be joined by uh, David Levine, who um, I met at Baltic Ventures. He is a mentor on fundraising at Baltic Ventures um, and a really seasoned tech entrepreneur and investor. So he has worked extensively um, in tech over the last 20 years. Um, he, as an entrepreneur, he's also launched, scaled and exited um, businesses successfully and now runs uh, uh, Glen, Glen Luna Ventures um, and is a principal at Manchester Angels. So Glen Luna typically focus on pre c to Series A tech businesses across Europe and principal and uh, Manchester Angels are a group of 41 exited angels um, who uh, invest in disruptive technology businesses. He's an active advisor and a mentor to several technology startups and accelerator type programs, helping them to scale and grow and specifically focusing on their fundraising journeys. He's been hugely successful in raising millions in funding for both his own businesses and for others. Um, and really is passionate about um, innovative and disruptive uh, ventures. So David, we are so delighted to have you join us. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Um, and we're gonna just launch, uh, we're gonna move right into it, Matt, if you wanna just give us the poll and bring that up. And we thought we'd just start by kind of focusing in a little bit on what your primary challenges are in fundraising. So what do you think your primary challenges are in fundraising? Oh, right, how interesting. So vast majority, kind of 67% say finding investors interested in my industry. A little bit in negotiating favorable terms, um, some skepticism or risk aversion, but certainly the largest is finding investors interested in my industry. Uh, great, because we have an expert in that. <laughs> so he's gonna help us and, and talk us through a couple of strategies to bear in mind when we are thinking about raising funds. And I'm gonna um, hand over to you, David, uh, to take us away. Matt, if you can kick off. Thank you very much, Wanda. Thank you very much, Matt. And, and good morning, everybody, those of you who have made it this morning. So just a quick additional bit of background about me, I think that's particularly relevant to what I'm going to talk about. I spend my day working with founders to help them raise capital, primarily in technology B2B software businesses. Um, but hopefully for those who are not in that particular space, there's some, going to be some really interesting takeaways from this. And, and I'm not going to talk about in detail what makes a great deck or what do great legal terms look like or, or how do you negotiate good, good terms. I'm going to talk about the stuff that nobody talks about, right, which is the kind of the day-to-day the -day gritty, low-level, grind stuff you need to do to do a successful raise. And, that, and that's what I'm going to walk through today. Can we get the next slide, please? Okay. Raising money isn't brain surgery. It's not even rocket science. Although I actually uh, gave this pitch on the UK Space Accelerator um, and there were actual genuine rocket scientists in the room, um, which is interesting, right? It's not hard. It, it, it's, it's incredibly, well, it's not intellectually hard. It is a hard process. It takes a huge amount of your time. It's emotionally very hard because people will take your time and, and you'll get a huge bunch of no's you'll get a huge bunch of people not even responding to you you'll 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 wonder where 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 are people's p's and q's right why aren't they saying please and thank you and and, and not for thank you very much it all goes out the window and it is a hard hard process from that perspective 
but it is not actually that difficult to do if you're focused and you have thick skin and you know what you're doing. And that's the intent of what I'm trying to talk you through this morning. Next slide, please. This for me, I think sums up. This is called, this lady's Melanie Perkins, right? I'm sure most people on this call use Canva. And if you aren't, you should, right? Canva is the most incredible business. It democratizes design. Everything from decks, everybody can use Canva for your decks, to flyers, to presentations, to you name it, you, you use it, right? Um, it's just the most phenomenal tool. And the numbers are staggering, right? They're, they're worth, you know, a, a quarter of a trillion, right? It's a huge number, 25.5 billion valuation. Um, in terms of their, their raises, they got uh, 1.7 billion times in revenue, growing 21% year on year. They raised $57 million over 17 rounds. Well, those are kind of smaller follow on rounds. Yeah, people are fighting, 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 constantly to get in and around. Acquired six companies, they 135 million active users, and 16 million of those are paying. Does anybody know? I'm not going to open this up because the technology approach just takes long. Does anybody know how many no's Melanie Perkins got? You have five seconds to come up with a number in your head. Five, four, three, two, 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 one. Over a hundred. Thank you very much, Nick Mayhew. Literally a hundred no's. She took over a hundred no's too early for us. Not sure how big this is going to be, how this will scale, weather's a bit grey today. Sometimes nonsensical reasons, sometimes good reasons. Hundred no's before she got her first yes. Right? So yes. it's possible. Yeah. Go David, on. I just want to come in here and I want to talk a little bit about those no's. And I mean, we know that raising is a hugely emotional journey uh, for founders, right? And um, and I just want to talk a little bit about those no's and the kind of advice you give two founders when they're getting no after no after no yeah i say i say look at only perkins right that, <laughs> that, 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 that literally is what i say you will get lots and lots of no's and i tell people all the time you will get lots and lots of no's mm. some are good no's a good no is this is not for us and here are the reasons why and they're thoughtful mm. and they're insightful maybe they'll align with their thesis maybe it's too early maybe they're not they're not sure how you'll scale. Mm. Yeah, really good info you can use to, to kind of build into your process and, and, and move to the next, next level. Sometimes you won't, you'll just get, sorry, not for me, right? And then you'll go and ask, you know, that's really, thank you so much for your time. Would you mind giving me a couple of a couple of bullet points as to why just to help me? Sometimes people will, will, will do that. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes, you know, most investors, are human, not all, but most investors <laughs> are human, right? They get things wrong, they have biases, they have bad days in the office, they're in the mood, they might say the wrong thing, they make a judgment call because they've got 100 decks to review in their inbox and they get it wrong. That's the reality. The thing is not take it personally, get thick skin, move on, because Melanie Perkins is phenomenal, but so are most founders when they're doing this, so, so don't worry. Next slide, please. So my super clever, super smart, that nobody's ever thought of before, trademarked and IP'd up to the gills, hashtag sarcasm, methodology is really quite simple. It's called, it's called ready, aim, fire, which means get ready, get prepped, and then do it, right? So I'm going to break this presentation into these three areas, right? So there's stuff you should do before you even get started, right? Before you, you, you get out there and before you really start doing this language, there is stuff you need to do. Then there is the really just about to go. I need to now, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in pre-execution mode. There's stuff I need to do. And then there's stuff I do to actually get the thing going and to run through the process. And, and it, this is a really effective way I find of thinking about things. Now, I'm not going to be able to, on this call, go through all of this stuff 
individually, right? So I'm going to quickly run through this by now. I'm going to just dig deep into a few of these areas. So get your decks ready, right? Oh, David, I think we've just lost you there for a second. David? Can anybody else hear me? Oh, we can see you now. You're back. We right, lost you okay. for a second. So I've, you, I've, you, we lost you at get your decks ready. And I, I'm not sure if you want Matt to move on to the next slide. No, but no, we no, lost no, you no, at no. Get your just, decks ready. Just keep here, right? So I'm not sure. <laughs> no, apologies. Right. So it's very important. Get your decks ready, right? There are, there are two decks you'll need, at least. One is a teaser deck. No more than seven to ten slides. The purpose of a teaser deck is to get on the call or get a meeting with an investor. You will never get an investment sold on the basis of a deck. Deck one, the teaser deck, gets you in front of the investor. It's getting permission to have that call. Therefore, hide the granularity, hide the gray areas. Something is seven out of 10, call it 10 out of 10. Pure purpose deck, get the call. In-depth deck is for the meeting. Do not have 60 billion versions of decks for different investors at different times. You need to do you. Do not change who you are, what you're doing, what you're going to do, what your roadmap is, just because of, of an investor. Now, if you're getting kind of consistent feedback from a large enough sample of investors that perhaps your business isn't scalable, go away and think about that. But don't just change things because an investor says a thing. Make sure you're checking that across the investors. So prepare your decks. Get the, the business ready. Position it. Know what you're doing. Know what the thing is that you're doing. We are a platform that automatically cuts carrots because carrot cutters need to do this efficiently, cheaper and better or, 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 or whatever, right? Get your messages super clear, sort out your skeletons and we'll talk about that. That's kind of the bit you do ready, right? Then in the aim phase, start to research your investors, right? You've got to hyper-personalize at scale. Remember, investors see billions of decks a day Probably a slight exaggeration, but maybe not too too big an exaggeration, right? So make sure if if you are a B two C business, you're selling. I don't know what it says about me, but I have this toilet roll subscription business that pops up my Facebook feed the whole time, right? No idea why. Really expensive stuff, but whatever, right? So if I'm selling toilet roll on subscription, then I am looking for B two C investment. Oh, David, we've lost you again. Your your Wi-Fi appears a little patchy today. Sorry, folks, just bear with us. I'm sure David will be back with us in a few minutes. We just seem to have lost him again. It just seems to be some patchy Wi-Fi going on. Maybe it's this awful weather. Yeah. You there? there you are, yes. Thanks, not sure. David. Not sure. I think it might just be a little bit of a patchy Wi-Fi there. It might be bad weather. Okay, my, my apologies. All, all, all looks good on my end, so my apologies. Um, so what I'm saying is, if if make sure you get your investor right. If you are a B two C business, if you're scaling toilet roll on a subscription basis, whatever you do, don't reach out to an AI robotic investor because you are wasting your time. So manage it like a sales process. You set up CRM. Um, so the email sequences, nudge email, and you start with less important investors. You will not get this right first off the bat. It's okay to piss off a few investors. It's okay to give the wrong messages. It's okay not to get this right straight away. So start off with your with the investors who are less important to you to test the process. And then in the fire stage, press the button, go for it, make sure you work, treat it like a sales process, be disciplined, keep your CRM, um, updated constantly qualify in and qualify out the most important commodity you have is time if you are spending time you are talking to the wrong investors you are wasting that time if somebody is not going to invest or they're not a right fit for you qualify them out don't don't talk to them finally keep a wiki what that means when you get questions from an investor keep note of those questions Put them into a wiki on um, Google Sheet or, or Notion, whatever. Share them with the next investors because it makes you look super smart and you're doing the job of the associate for you. Next slide, please. 
Okay. Amazing, David. I want to, can I just pick up on uh, two things there that I found really interesting and you might be coming to them. I think you're probably coming, going to touch on them. The one is um, to practice on the investors that you don't anticipate are going to be the most important to you um, and to do those first. Um, uh, how many founders actually think about what investors are going to be best for them or do they just go hell for leather to everybody with the same kind of priority and ranking? Uh, the latter by far they spam everyone they don't think it through they don't think and i don't blame them right when you are an early stage man in particular you are spinning 62 different plates at least all the time mm. you have four full-time jobs at least you're raising running managing and hiring all the time all the time so people just do it right and it, it just i mean particularly when you can you google anti-spam and and, and, and you know anti-spam stuff you, you will get this wrong so that's why this is a process that you can make much better if you stop to prepare to aim and pour fire. Thank you. Okay. One of the most important things to, to your point, Wanda, is be disciplined. This is a sales process. You start with a funnel. At the top of your funnel, you will have, should have, a lot of investors to go into the funnel. Right, and you do that by finding them on LinkedIn, by networking. You know, if you're not the type of person who's good at networking and feels a bit intimidated by, I, I get it, I really get it. But it's your job. Get out there, get out of the building, meet people, get on Twitter, um, you know, just get out there. Fill the top of the funnel with really good investors by being out there. Send short to the point emails plus your teaser deck. Qualify them in or qualify them out. Then you can do that first meeting. The purpose of your teaser deck is to get the first meeting. The purpose of the first meeting is not to get the investment done. It's to get to the next meeting. If you probably only have two or three meetings, uh, then you get a term sheet and you're going to do due diligence and then you get your, your investment over the line, hopefully. Manage it disciplined with the CRM. Is there a question there, Wanda, you want to take now? Or? Yeah, there is. Um, Nick just asked for a newbie. How do you, uh, I get qualify in, how do you qualify out? Well, if somebody- I wonder if David can answer for a newbie, how you qualify in when you don't know who they are. Oh, he gets qualify out. I wonder if you can answer, how do you qualify in when you don't know who they are? Well, that's what you, you find out who they are. Research them, get on their websites, get on their Twitter, get on their LinkedIn. Investors like to talk a lot about themselves. You can look at their portfolio. <clears throat> you know, you can, you're, you're constantly qualifying and qualifying. As you get to know somebody, a bit like dating, as you get to know somebody, the stuff you don't know on date number one, the stuff you don't know before you've even met them, but as you get to know them, you can kind of get to know them, yeah, it's not for me. Or, you know, I'm getting bad vibes, you know, they want three times liquidation prep and 12 seats on my board, and, you know, they want to be able to fire me with, with just blowing my direction. You know, you'll get to know them, right? So you qualify in, you qualify out. It's a constant process as you go through that, that funnel. Next slide, please. Okay, get, what do I mean by getting your materials in shape, right? So this is primarily about the deck, okay? Um, the deck, again, teaser deck, purpose of the teaser deck is on initial cold, cold, cold email, whatever. The purpose of the teaser deck is to say, can we get on a call? And if you Google the best pitch decks ever, you will get just a billion results, right? Here's what I do. Here's what I coach people to. Here's what works for me. And here's what, you here's what we do. We, have the, we are a carrot peeling platform for carrot peelers that makes carrot peeling easier, quicker, and more efficient. Right, that's on your first slide. Get rid of nonsense words, like mission, vision, you know, read it out loud. Go find your grandma, go find somebody else's grandma, right? Make sure that your grandma or somebody else's grandma understands what you do. Stick it on the first slide. A lot of investors will not get past slide one. Don't have slide one as a pretty picture of your logo. Tell people what you do in slide one. Then tell people why it's hard and why it's not been done yet, right? Why is this a thing? Has anybody done it? Maybe they have done it, but this is why it's, it's hard, right? Here's why the problem exists. Here's why it's needed. Here's why it matters. Here are the people, here are the customers. And you know, you know what's really cool and really good is 
if you're doing something that people are currently solving, right, but you want to solve it better, that's fabulous. I'll give you an example of that in a sec. Here's why we're the ones to build it. So don't show a slide with just your pretty faces on them and a title. Why are you the person? What, why are you the team? What have you done previously, right, that, that says you're the guy to do it? It's what we call founder market fit. Here's how it works. So just, just talk a little bit how the thing works. Here's how the big mark can be. Now, great example, particularly of the, here's the people who need to hear the criticism. I'm, I'm closing today a deal up in Copenhagen with a B2B returns management platform. So most people, if you buy something from ASOS or Amazon or whatever, with a good enough experience in returning stuff, get on the website, click a button, get a label, off you go, dead easy. But what happens when those products hit the warehouse of the retailer? Do they get lost? Is there a consistent pattern? This particular product has a, has a fault that if I was managing better, right? So, so that, that's quite an important thing. People are managing this process today, for sure. How? They're using WhatsApp, they're using spreadsheets, they're using email, they're using Slack. Stuff is falling through behind the couch. So people are solving that problem today, but not very well. And so the competition of this business aren't the other people solving the problem, right? It's I think, their competitors. Their competition really are the people using spreadsheets and email and Slack and WhatsApp, right? So just it's a super powerful message, right? That's my structure. But also get the rest of the materials. So get your teaser deck ready, get your full deck ready, get your financials ready, get your data room ready. Next slide, please. Every day in the week, raises fall over because there are dead, bo dead bodies buried under the concrete. Typically, that's in your cap table, right? In your cap table, maybe you have a, an angel who's taking too much. This, this, deal, this deal in Copenhagen, right, should have been done in August. It's only being done today because there are angels on the cap table that took too much and we had to restructure them, right? That will kill you. Um, a, a founder, co-founder, who was on the cap table early doors because everyone was great and happy and, that, and flappy that first day that you sketched out the business on the back of a napkin at the pub, and then life happened and it took you too long to raise money and that person to go and get a job to, to pay for things. But then we took their shares off them, or the kind of family documents were too loose and, and the shares didn't, you know, weren't, weren't. All that stuff will kill your race. Get your, and if you're a university spin out, almost certainly it's a problem because in this country, our TTOs, our transfer technology offices, universities take too much of the cap table. Look at your cap table. Your advisor friend agreements, your mate who did your first website and you said you're giving 50% of the business, that's going to kill you, right? It makes it help. <laughs> Early employees, sometimes people leave the business, sometimes for the right reasons, sometimes there's a, a legal thing happening, sort it out, get your SEIS, SEIS or EIS compliance sorted. There was another question there, wasn't there? Uh, there was a question, yes, around just going back to teaser slides, eight teaser slide versus one page exec summary, uh, um, well, no deck in first email. Uh, yeah, so good, good point. So yeah, I never send first decks an email um, for two reasons. Number one, it actually doesn't help to kind of spam, kind of spam rules to, to put, to do attachment. If you're sending, let's like, say you're sending out 30 emails and they've all got either a link to a deck or an attachment, you might get flagged as spam. So I wouldn't do that. Also, it makes the investor do a little bit of work. If I say, can I send you my deck? Mm. I want someone to say, yeah, send me your deck, right? Remember, qualify in, qualify out. You might say, yeah, but oh, I'm going to leave on the table that one investor who, who didn't ask me. Well, you know, you might, but in reality, you're not going to, right? So, so never send deck. Um, one page can work. Yeah, that, I don't care. That's fine. If that works for you and it's, it works, it, it depends, right? Some people say, what about videos? Personally, I don't watch videos. Right, it, and, uh, if someone says just, just watch this personalized video, I'm like, delete. I just don't, it's just me, right? Doesn't mean that I'm right, doesn't mean I'm wrong. I'm sure I'm missing out on stuff I shouldn't be missing out on. I'm just a guy who doesn't watch videos. Some guys don't like reading, right? They won't read a, a, a really detailed one page, some are visual. So it depends, experiment, try it, see what works. 
Thanks, David. I just want to stick on the skeletons in the closet just for one second, and I'm aware that time is moving on. We've still got quite a bit to cover. How much conflict do you see arising at this stage between founders, co-founders, um, and in founding um, teams um, when you're trying to run out, iron out all the skeletons? Yeah, it, it happens. That, that, that's why you cannot wait to raise your, raise your round to sort them out. Yeah. Right? That is just not going to work. Sort them out now. Because an investor will run it, will run a mile. Get them sorted before you start. That's why it's in the ready phase. Before right. you start engaging, get it sorted. Awesome. Next slide, please. Quick poll, quick break in the flow for a quick poll. Which funding sources have you explored or are you interested in exploring? Yeah, it looks like we've got some results that have come in. So a lot of people interested in Angel. 67% interested in Angel. And then uh, uh, lots of self-funding, bootstrapping. Some, about 50%, uh, exploring grants or government funding. Um, and, and less on the crowd and VC side. Some super interesting results there. Uh, good to know that a lot of people on this call are looking at angels <clears throat> and uh, some looking at grants or government. Uh, in your wheelhouse, David. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, look, I hate crowdfunding. I think there are very, very few businesses that are right for crowdfunding. Um, I think the crowdfunding companies promise a lot, deliver a little. It's not a great sign for next set stage investors. It takes a hell of a lot of work to do. Angels are great, particularly stage. And I wonder if, if this is kind of the numbers here are kind of more symbolic of or representative of earlier stage founders. So angels early on are really good. Um, angel investors like herding cats be, be, be warned, right? Um, I'm glad nobody's going to banks because, you know, debt funding should be for really growth businesses, right? Um, and no, that was all good. I'm happy with that. Thanks, Matt. Can you move us along? Okay, super quick. So if you do not know what SCIS or EIS is, make yourself acquainted, right? This is, I don't care about your political affiliations, affiliations right? I think it was Labour government who, who, who instituted the SCIS, EIS. The Tories um, increased it. It is phenomenal, and we are the envy of the investing world across the world because of these tax breaks. What it means is for the first 250K that you take in as a business, as long as you have assets up to 350K, you've been trading for less than th th three years, your investors get an immediate 50% tax relief. So if an, an angel investor puts in 100 grand, it's only cost them 50 grand straight away. They got the 50% capital gains release, inherent tax leave, loss relief on that exit. It's just brilliant. It's just phenomenal. Most UK-based investors will demand SAS and EIS. Once your first 250k of SAS is spent, you then got EIS, which allows you to take up to 12 million quid, no more than five million a year. You can have assets to 15 mil, blah, blah, blah. Right? Uh, I'm not sure my, my type of there. I don't think it's trading for less than three years. So ignore that bit. Yeah. Sure it's right. But you get up to 30%, not 50% of the tax relief, um, capital gains, tax, et cetera, et cetera. So it's brilliant, right? Google, I'm not going to spend more time on than this. Google SAS EIS, make sure you understand it, make sure you know why people want it. Apply for advanced assurance. Um, it is a superpower. Next slide, please. Right, do your research. So here's two places that I do research and the resources at the end of the deck. So openvc.app, there's loads of these out there, right? So there's lots of these lists that get put out yeah. and you use openvc.app to research. I uh, always use Apollo to get emails. You can search for people's uh, email addresses. They're just brilliant, right? This is about research. So who are they? What do they invest in, in terms of sector, in terms of segments, in terms of geography? Um, what do they look for? How do I get access to them via email, via warm contacts, via LinkedIn, whatever? Do your research. Yes, it takes a while. Yes, it takes work. But you know what? That's just life and it's very, very important to make sure you are doing your research. Next slide. Okay. 
One of the ways, here's a really tactical point, really little point. And I, use, I use Apollo for this or Woodpecker. You can use MailChimp. Very often, people don't follow up. What do we mean by that? So when reaching out to an investor for a, a, for a founder, which is what I do on a daily basis, I create a three email sequence. That's email one on day one, which is, hey there, uh, I've got this personalization hook. So if you look on the left hand side, that's my template. On the right hand side, you'll see that the that personalization hook has been filled in, right? With XGN e-commerce and business productivity on Skype, all those themes, e-commerce, all that kind of stuff, right? That's why I call my personalization hook. That tells an investor, I've looked at you, this is why you're relevant, this is why you're talking to me. So I create a three email sequence, day one, send out the full thing. Automatically on day six or seven, it sends out, hey. And then you're really busy, just want to see if you have a chance to look. And then another seven or eight days later, I go, look, final nudge, know you're busy, I'd love for you to get your eyes on, on this, right? So that's a sequence. It do it automatically because I reckon, I'm not looking at the data on this, but a very great deal of responses I get in emails two and three because people are busy. Either they just leave it in their inbox or they just delete it because they're too busy. So just a, a polite nudge on autopilot is brilliant. In terms of using something like like Woodpecker or, or, or Apollo, what you do is you put together your list of investors you're looking for. You have a placeholder in your template, you can see the left hand side called personalization. You in that list, you put it into a spreadsheet, a CSV file, you have a column called personalization hook or hook. You put your personalization text, which you can see on the right hand side, starts with with next gen e-commerce and ends in the interest, and then you upload that back to Apollo at Woodpecker. And what does it pulls the name, it pulls the email address and pulls the hook out of there. So there you have a, a sequence of personalized emails. Less is more, right? This is not a great example, probably a bit too much, but be really, really tight on language, obsessed over language, obsessed over words. Be hyper responsive, right? There is an irony and a frustration, which I really get amongst families, which is this investor has taken three weeks to reply <laughs> and if I've not replied within four hours, they think I'm not engaged. That's life. You're right. It's annoying. It's a pain. Who do they think they are? Be hyper responsive. We'll take a question here if there are ones on this. We do. There's a question that says, um, do you ask for firm number or range? when raising, and I think you're going to actually get to this point. So that's why I didn't bring it up now, because I think you're actually going to get to this point later on. Um, I'll, we've got 20 minutes left for all time for questions. Let me, let me, let me answer this now. Never, ever, ever, ever ask for a range, ever, right? Ranges are really bad. They make you look stupid, and I know most people aren't stupid. Um, because if I'm saying I'm raising 500 and a million quid, right? There is a huge difference between 500 and a million quid, and it gives the message that you don't know what you're going to spend it on. Mm -hmm. And there are three questions you need to answer. How much am I raising? What am I going to spend on? Where will the company be when that money is spent? Right, a range makes you look like you haven't done your homework, you don't know what you're going to be doing with the money. Now, it's perfectly fine to go for 500, say we're raising 500, and be oversubscribed. And figure that out. That's fine. You can figure that out. Don't worry about it. Do not ever, ever, ever ask for a range. Great. Okay. Let's move on, Matt. Okay. Be super hyper disciplined. Manage the process like a sales process. Do Use a CRM. Now, I'm showing you a picture of my CRM. I've built Notion. I'm making that template available. On, it's on the last slide, and, which, and that last slide will be set around with a QR code. So feel free to help yourself to, to my free Notion CRM. Pleasure. Manage it really, really disciplined like a sales process. Look at who you, the leads are, who you want to talk to, that's your research. Contact or send them an email. Engaged, they've replied, said that's the meeting, send them your deck, yeah, really cool, like that. DD, well, we're in DD here, right? Really, really, really deep and having a good look at this. Pass, loads of people will pass. And then there's a, one more comment that's not shown on things called later stage. A lot of people say, love you doing, too early for us, come back to us later. Manage it like a disciplined sales process. Next. Can I ask a question here, yeah. um, David? Um, how good are founders at managing that sales process? 
because um, I've often encountered fa- uh, founders that are super ideas and building people, but not necessarily great at sales. Yeah, so I, th- I think that's, that, that's kind of two separate questions there, right? So one question there is how good they are managing the process and how good they are at sales, okay? Mm. So this is a sales process. You are selling the business. So you need to be good at selling the business, right? That doesn't necessarily, it's not quite the same as kind of business development, enterprise sales or selling yourself or whatever else, but not a million miles away. But you've got to be disciplined at this, right? Mm. You've got to say, you know, if you are not good at being disciplined, make yourself good at it, right? You know, no excuses. You, otherwise, you will lose stuff. You'll fall flat. You'll miss investors who want in. You'll waste time on investors who don't want in. Um, you'll end up doing something wrong, looking silly. Just just get better at it. Another question has just come in. Um, many VCs expect you to use their form. So like uh, fill in this form on yeah, our site. Yeah, yeah. You know, so... Confession, guys, I, I raise money in, in, in two piles, right? I have my own angel investment network that I run up here in Manchester, and I have a business advisory where I will raise money for other people. As an advisory business, I hate forms because it just breaks my work stream. I hate it. It takes additional time. I really hate it. As someone who manages an angel, an angel network, I need people to fill out my form, right? It's, <laughs> it's a pain in the neck. I get it. But you know what? You're not going to change their minds right that's how they manage their workflow so you just have to do it and i'm sorry but i I really do get it and then do you go back and use the email sequencing that you've described as well as that or do you just do the form or what somebody somebody said to you usually somebody will say to you thanks very much please fill in the following form so Mm. anyway when somebody in the sequence when somebody replies that's not anyway great it's really saying do it do it their way great um matt next slide right this is the last slide so and, and this is a great time so we can go to questions where to be fair where most of the value comes so this slide guys don't rush to take pictures now it's fine one was going to send this round to you um i've got a few things in, in there so um I've, I've given you my data room template right on notion uh, can my investors see around that I've built? I use on, on Notion. I use OpenVC, the app. I use Apollo. And I use ShipShape. Use LinkedIn. Use X. All known as Twitter, apparently. Um, <laughs> feel free. Grab these. Use these. This is These are the things that I use in my everyday. These are the, the tools that get me where I did last year. I did seven angel deals out of my angel investment network. And six deals for business outside the angel investment network. I've done um, my second deal of the year is getting signed. That well, always my third deal of the year is being signed today. Oh, yay! Um, which is which is good and yay. Um, and this is the stuff that I use to get these deals done. So feel free to take them and use them. Don't rush to just take a QR code of now. You will get it afterwards. Yeah, so- we'll send out this resources page, everybody. Um, David is um very kindly just giving the stuff to you to say, hey, this is stuff for you to use. This is uh, the kind of stuff I use. So he's um, given us permission to send out this resources page to all of you. So we will do that. Great. Should we have some questions, Robert? Yeah, shall we do that? I just want to quickly touch, Matt, if we can just go on to um, here's uh, our next strategy cafe. And then we'll go, we'll invite everybody to come off mute and ask any questions live to David. Uh, coming up on our next strategy cafe um, on the 28th of March, we're very lucky to have Peter van Eerden join us. Peter is a head of people partnering. He's worked with several tech startups as they've been acquired, taken over and merged um, by big global organizations. And we're going to be chatting about growth and the impact on people. So what is the, what are the risks that you should be looking out for? Um, what are the aspects uh, that you should be considering um, and what are the actual risks on P- on the people in the business um, and the uh, tripwires and the things that you should be thinking about uh, when you are growing, merging, uh, being acquired. So we look forward to uh, uh, having you join us for that uh, discussion. Uh, Peter's a lovely, uh, very generous um, guy and um, Uh, it's sure to be a great conversation.